We've had a very generous international student um, visa process that has led to integrity challenges within the system, people gaming the system, um, and in some instances, fraud. So there is, a, there is a pull and push that we have to look at carefully and we have to take a surgical approach to these vast numbers of, uh, of, of students that are being provided false hope to come to this country. They've been misled by, by uh, some nefarious actors. And so uh, enough is enough on that. I think we need to take a serious look at, 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 at what, what the, who those actors are. The vast majority of the peoples that took the oath of citizenship today that I administered for the first time as immigration minister in Mississauga are people that are uh, doctors, nurses, healthcare workers, PSW workers, um, and they are an asset to this country. We have labor shortages and we need skilled trades, whether it's in agriculture, trades, um, healthcare. It, it, they, they reflect the important need of this country to have skilled workers that we don't have homegrown in this country. Canada, the name immigration minister, Mark Miller, is a Red FM studio. We will talk about it in the last few weeks. We have done this department in the last few weeks. ਤੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦਾ ਆਪਣੀ ਮਿਨਿਸਟਰੀ ਨੂੰ ਲੈ ਕੇ ਕੈਨਾ ਕੈਨੇਡਾ ਦੀ ਇਮੀਗ੍ਰੇਸ਼ਨ ਪਾਲਿਸੀ ਨੂੰ ਲੈ ਕੇ ਇਮੀਗ੍ਰੇਸ਼ਨ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਨੂੰ ਲੈ ਕੇ ਕੀ ਵਿਜ਼ਨ ਹੈ ਕੀ ਉਹ ਸੋਚਦੇ ਨੇ ਮਿਸਟਰ ਵੈਲਕਮ ਥੈਂਕਸ ਫॉर ਕਮਿੰਗ ਟੂ ਆਰ ਸਟੂਡੀਓ ਥੈਂਕਸ ਫॉर ਹੈਵਿੰਗ ਮੀ ਔਨ ਰੈਡ ਐਫ ਐਮ ਥਿਸ ਇਜ਼ ਮਾਈ ਫਰਸਟ ਲਾਈਵ ਇੰਟਰਵਿਊ ਐਜ਼ ਅ ਐਜ਼ ਅ ਮਿਨਿਸਟਰ ਸੋ ਗਲੈਡ ਟੂ ਬੀ ਹੀਰ ਸੋ ਮਿਨਿਸਟਰ ਵੀ ਅਪਰੀਸ਼ੀਏਟ ਥੈਟ ਬ੍ਰੈਂਪਟਨ ਇਜ਼ ਔਨ ਯੂਰ ਪ੍ਰਾਇਓਰਟੀ ਲਿਸਟ ਐਂਡ ਐਜ਼ ਅ ਨਿਊ ਮਿਨਿਸਟਰ ਪੀਪਲ ਵੁਡ ਲਾਈਕ ਟੂ ਨੋ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਯੂਰ ਵਿਜ਼ਨ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਯੂਰ ਥਾਟਸ about canada's immigration program so i'll start with the uh, the new express entry program so uh, the original announcement announcement was made in may and yesterday there was a, another announcement so we'd like to start with that so would you like to talk about the announcement that was made yesterday yeah absolutely and and it's an opportunity to talk about how important uh, immigration is to our country to build it and to make this a better place. Um, we fancy ourselves as the best country in the world, but we've got work to do. Uh, mm -hmm. It isn't a perfect record. And key to, key to developing that is to make sure that our economy is thriving. Um, the express entry, the express, the, the express entry uh, portion of, uh, of the announcements that we have made over the last little while is a reflection that we have labor shortages and we need skilled trades, whether it's in agriculture, trades, mm -hmm. um, healthcare, it, it, they, they reflect the important need of this country to have skilled workers that we don't have homegrown in this country. And, and yesterday was one uh, wave of that. And we're looking forward to, to making sure that, that, that we can continue along those lines to make sure that we can get that, uh, those key trades in this country in an expedited fashion. Everyone knows uh, the lags at times that we've seen with getting the proper paperwork and getting the proper visa north authorizations to work in this country. But in the meantime, a lot of those jobs go unfulfilled. So we know the shortages that exist here in Ontario, uh, but there's some bright minds around the country that we can attract here. And I think this is part of our rationalization inside the department to see how we can do a better job. So, so the idea is to link uh, immigration with our, our job, labor market, market requirements. Yeah, I mean, look, it's, it's, well over 60% of the immigration in this country is specifically economically directed. There's a, there, there's a chunk of it that is refugee and asylum seekers, a chunk of it that is uh, family reunification. We know how, how important those are. Um, but the vast majority of the peoples that took the oath of citizenship today that I administered for the first time as immigration minister in Mississauga are people that are uh, doctors, nurses, healthcare workers, PSW workers, um, and they are an asset to this country and they are the vast majority of the people that took that oath. Uh, they've taken too long to get in this country f the, through no fault of their own. And so we're looking to streamline that. So Minister, I know it's just one week you joined the ministry. Any idea how many immigrants we are expecting in these categories this, this year? Hard to say, uh, hard to say in, those in those particular categories. Mm -hmm. it, it, generally, we will keep the numbers at around 60% as mm -hmm. to what that component of our immigration levels are. So we're looking at little under half a million. Um, to welcome in, in various categories, but in the ones uh, that we see as being able to fulfill and build on the economy, that's the vast majority of, uh, of the entrance. We're just looking to, in those targeted areas, to make that faster. We know the shortages that exist in healthcare. We know the shortages that exist in the agricultural sector and in the skilled trade sectors, and we want to be able to streamline that. Some people suggest that just like a new express entry, student international student visa program should also be linked with our labor market requirements uh, like uh, a big chunk of international students they are enrolled in such programs that have no connection with, with the labor market so is this something that is on your agenda generally yes i, I mean i think we want to facilitate we want to make sure that international students that are the best and brightest around the world 
have a way to get into Canada and, and, to, and to make this country better, whether they are uh, thinkers, creators, or, uh, or, or, or skilled laborers in, in, in the professions. Um, the, the challenge that we face is that we've had a very generous international student um, visa process that has led to integrity challenges within the system, people gaming the system, um, and in some instances, fraud. So there is, a, there is a pull and push that we have to look at carefully and we have to take a surgical approach to these vast numbers of, uh, of, of students that are being provided false hope to come to this country and then um, not being able to realize on that hope because they've been misled by, by uh, some nefarious actors. And so uh, enough is enough on that. I think we need to take a serious look at, 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 at what, what the, who those actors are, um, but to reward good behavior because there are some of the top class institutions that people want to get into that are attracting the top talent in this world and we don't want to harm them. But at the same time, we want to be able to uh, prevent those who are gaming a multi-billion dollar economy of getting people to pay thousands and thousands of dollars based on a false hope of promise and then having them stuck here and in very, very difficult conditions. So there's a challenge there. there. Uh, within that, there is also the challenge of making sure that people are able to be get into the skilled trades. There's only so much a government can do to direct a person, particular person to do anything. Um, and that's important. People are free to do what they want. Um, but in this, uh, in this type of situation, we're looking at a very a careful set of circumstances that we need to tailor carefully to make sure that we are uh, getting this right. And right now, obviously, with the numbers that we're seeing, um, there is there are some challenges to the integrity of the system, uh, and in some extreme circumstances, some fraud. Uh, a very common criticism that we hear from people about our annual numbers, people say that Canada is bringing too many immigrants without ensuring that uh, we have infrastructure in place, for example, our health system, our housing sector, so they are the, these sectors are under stress because we are bringing too many people. So, so what are your thoughts? I have a number of thoughts on that. I think my general thought on that is, um, you know, throughout our history, uh, immigrants to this country have been blamed for for taking away jobs or taking people's houses away or causing housing inflation, and we we see that among some sector of the population that don't have the immigrants' best wishes at hearts. Um, on the margins of that is a very important discussion as to if we're getting this right in the first place. Um, a lot of people, the permanent residents that are here, have houses. Um, certainly the doubling or tripling of home equity values or the cost for someone that doesn't have a house to buy it has increased. And that really has very little to do with immigration to this country. A lot of, you know, and, and to the contrary, in some, in many instances, when we're talking about skilled labor, um, if, we have a, if we have a housing boom, we need actually the people to build it. Uh, and the capital to build it, and that comes with immigration. So again, it's in an area where we have to be quite surgical about how we how we how we fix a system that is um, that, that that is going at full steam and has to be if we're going to uh, if we're going to renew the population uh, demographics in this country. I mean, that we do have in Canada an aging population. Um, Brampton has one of the youngest, and that's exactly what we're looking for. Um, but within that whole context, there, there there is a need to make sure that that we are that we're getting this right. So folks to build houses, uh, folks that will contribute the capital in order to, to generate more housing, but also when it comes to uh, asylum seekers or refugees, making sure that they have the proper supports uh, that they have in this country and that what they, you would expect of any G7 country with an open heart. But, but you believe that we can continue with, 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 these, with these goals of bringing like half a million people every year? I think with, the, with, with what we are seeing in a, from a generational perspective, uh, absolutely. I mean, we, we need those numbers we, to, 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 to continue as a country and to be the face of the country that Canadians and the people that put me in this place and vote for me want us to be. Um, the ambitious dental plans that we have as a government can't be filled without uh, dentists, half of whom are immigrants. Uh, we cannot um, have a proper Medicare system, a medical system, without those nurses and doctors that in a large part are increasingly coming from outside Canada. So uh, there's a need there. We have to recognize it and celebrate it because we're talking about people that are actually building the future of this country. A popular program in our communities, parents and grandparents sponsorship program. Have you paid attention to this this particular program? Yeah, and, and obviously this... Th Unified families are the heart of of communities, and you know, in the context where, as Manny was saying, 50 years ago it was you know there was one retiree to seven workers, and, and now it's three to it's three to one. Um, the importance to have a young population that is supported by by their families is is, is something that's key. But we have to look at it from uh, fr fr from 
a more complete perspective simply because uh, the families and, and grandparents' mm -hmm. reunification are older shouldn't be a reason why they wouldn't uh, be able to, to be part of this country. Um, I'm willing to look at, at innovative solutions. Uh, I know we've done a couple in the past. The, the, the lottery system is, is sort of a, you know, a, a shot in the dark at some times. It, it perhaps isn't fair to some people that don't see themselves yeah. being the beneficiary of it. I think the super visa was, is very important to have people here on a five-year five term and then it's then, then potentially renewable. But I'm willing to look at a number of other options because um, th this is something that deals with the fairness of the family. So uh, five days in, but I'm willing to take a look at that. <laughs> any any other thing you would like to add? Any message to the community? Well, first, thank you for for having me on the air. This is this is my first interview live as the minister of, uh, of immigration, refugees, and citizenship on on Red FM. Um, my message as the minister is is a simple one. I'm here to be part of a. A government that is open, fair, and compassionate about our, our immigration system. This is the future of the country, the future face of the country, and happy to be a part of it. This is um, we've been a government for a little less than than eight years, and uh, we've asked Canadians, and Canadians have asked us to make some very important uh, decisions about who we welcome to this country. First, uh, as anyone would want uh, during during a situation of crisis and war, welcoming of Syrian refugees. It was uh, the the pride of one of our first acts that we were able to do as a government, uh, and, and and Canadians wanted that. And obviously, during um, a very difficult period in Afghanistan, to welcome another forty thousand uh, Afghan immigrants, and during a, a war with uh, with Russia, a war of geopolitical importance and, and, and aggression against Ukraine, to uh, open our hearts and our and our and our homes to Ukrainian refugees, and that that is something that um, that is some that is something that I think. Canadians expect us to do as a country, but we have to also recognize that co that comes with pressures. There are not immigration officers waiting for work to come in. They're stacked, there's lots of work, and there are backlogs. And I think that's the reality of what it is to manage a country uh, as big and as generous as Canada. Um, but I don't think we uh, can afford to as human beings to, to close our doors. So this is about the future of our country and, and how we see ourselves as Canadians. And everyone has a role to play, and the immigrant population is uh, is foremost among that. Thank you, Minister, for coming to our studio. Thanks for your time today. Thank you.